This is Live Well Talk on a Day in the Life of Environmental Services. I'm Dr. Dustin Arnold, Chief Medical Officer at Unipoint Point Health, St. Luke's Hospital. Today's episode is part of a series of podcasts where we sit down with team members in various roles at Unipoint Point Health and get to know what they do on a daily basis. We've uh, come to appreciate that a hospital is just not doctors and nurses, but there's an entire team uh, that uh, keeps the doors open and cares for patients. Joining me today on the episode is Brandy Dolter, Manager of Environmental Services, or EVS, to discuss types of roles that make up the EVS team and what they do. Brandy, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Good to sit down with you. <laughs> you know, people know, people might not know if we're total joint accredited, People might not know that the te- that how many Tesla the MRI is. Uh, you know, I have a white coat on. People, well, you're a doctor. You have a white coat on. You must know what you're doing. Uh, we hope you know, <laughs> that I know what I'm doing. But everybody knows when it's clean. Exactly. You know, I mean, that is just a basic impression, you know. Um, and environmental service is so important to that. And I, your team takes so much pride in that. But d- just give me an overview of what actually environmental service does here in the hospital. Um, so it's more than being a janitor. <laughs> Let's just start right there. It is. <laughs> um, you know, we're the first impression when people walk in um, to the hospital doors. They notice if your carpet's dirty or if stuff's out of place. So we play an essential role in the healthcare um, environment. Um, we work alongside many professionals like yourself and um, our infection prevention team to make sure that we are um, providing a clean and safe environment for our patients and um, staff outside um it starts outside on the grounds um where we pick up you know trash and make it nice and then uh inside making sure the floors are clean the rooms are clean for the patients coming in um it's it's a hard job a really hard job it it, it um it, it's a very hard job people just think you know like you said it's it's just a janitor but it's it's a lot more than that because you have to know procedures and how to use stuff and um follow protocols yeah yes there it's it's like it's might be janitorial services but the amount of regulations on that is mm-hmm. is tremendous biohazards etc i mean it's not just emptying the trash yep our um, equipment operators are dot certified um, to um, handle our you know medical waste and hazardous materials pharmaceutical waste so we have to do yearly training on that right um First things first, because this I know a lot of listeners are here, carpet or floors. What? <laughs> how's your team feel about that? Um, we like hard floors. Hard floors, yeah. <laughs> Carpets. Um, we, we're very lucky here. We have a great carpet program, um, but um, hard floors are a lot easier yeah. to maintain. I, I I know we went with the carpet to make keep the noise down. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I totally get that, but I'm kind of old school. I like the hard floors. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I, I bet your team. We're would. we're going towards that. So yeah, it's, slowly um, when we slowly, renovate it, I yep. think we, yeah, it makes it easier to keep it clean. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of take us through how the team is structured. I mean, what are the different roles? I mean, it's I know you have, uh, I could name by name, you know, but like uh, the, the team members that I see on a daily basis. Uh, what 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 are their different roles? Um, so we have supervisors um, that have. Um, I've been lucky that the supervisors we have have been here for many years, so they have a lot of knowledge and um, um, advice. Um, we have a couple leads, both day and night shift, and then we have housekeepers, equipment operators, and then we have a groundskeeper and a floor care specialist. So what what do they do? I mean, other than specialized in floor, but I mean, can you kind of give us more detail on that? Um, so some of our older floors that we have, um, the floor specialist goes and strips them, rewaxes them, makes them all shiny. Um, a lot of our newer floors have gone away from that. So, um, she's doing more maintenance on the floors now than, uh, um, than what it was previously, but it used to be stripping off the old stuff, putting new stuff on a very tedious job and usually has to be done, you know, on the off shifts. So not very many people because it got closed down hallways for that. Exactly. You know, that's, uh, so. that's what's hard about a hospital is we're open 24 seven. It's not like mm-hmm. we're closed. You know, yep. you can get your work done from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what is the role of just a, a, 
a housekeeper that type. So the housekeepers, um, their daily role is um, they go to a unit, um, a, a department, and they clean. So our first shift housekeepers differ from our second shift housekeepers. First shift housekeepers focus uh, on patient rooms and more they interact more with the patients. Um, and they go in and do cleaning, the daily cleaning, and then also discharges. Um, second shift is more in your procedural areas and your office cleaning. So after everybody's done for the day, our second shift housekeeping team goes in and cleans all that. Um, so just a couple different roles, um, with that, but, um, they both, they both do beds when discharges, we average about 80 discharges a day. So that's how many beds we're cleaning a day on top of, you know, cleaning them. And then equipment operators, how does that, what is that? The equipment operators are, um, they pick up the trash. They clean, use the, the big machines to clean the floors, the sweepers, the scrubbers. Um, they do our projects. Um, uh, we have rooms set up, so they set up rooms for meetings and stuff. Um, they go around and fill since COVID, they go around and fill uh, your mask and hand sanitizers and stuff. Um, so they kind of they kind of do a little bit of everything, um, and and they even fill in in housekeeping as well. Um, you know, sometimes we just have to move those pieces around. Yeah, I've seen. It's all hands on know, deck type of thing. So I've seen Don everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah Don's everywhere. He yes. does a little bit of everything. Yes. They change out the chemicals and the dispensers on the units, and um, yeah. So what is the training? I'm sure you just don't say. You know, here's a here's a cleaning supplies. Go go to it. What is the 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 training and the requirements to be a member of the EBS team? Um, we go through a two week training process. Um, they train with the leads. Um, the leads are with them the first like two or three days, like right beside them. And then they kind of release them to other team members, and then they work with the other team members um, to um, learn their daily cleaning steps. Um, a lot of people come in with no cleaning background, and um, which is great because we can train them right from the start. Some others come in from like house um, hotel cleaning and stuff, which is not the same. It is it's very different from hotel cleaning. Um, but uh, we go through. People need more time. We give them you know, more time. I, I like that analogy because I think it's easy to think it's the same thing. Yeah. We have a lot, we lose, unfortunately, we lose some people because of, they think it's the same thing yeah. and it, it's hard. No, it, it, it's, it totally is. We have a whole folder of policies and procedures that we have to learn. Um, you know, we use uh, the chemicals we use. We, housekeeping team is the only one that can dispense them because of the, you know, um, the safety around them. Um they're, but they're not leaving chocolates on your pillow either, are they? <laughs> nope. <laughs> we leave the TV on to a nice uh, music. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes. And yeah. sometimes, yeah, the thing that impresses me, and I shouldn't be, I, I shouldn't say, I'm not definitely not surprised by it, but I, it's, I've had relatives that have been in the hospital, and the, the people they remember is the EVS people and mm -hmm. their names and their stories, and, you know, and they, when they get readmitted, they, you know, they're so happy to see that same person mm -hmm. back because they remember them and really connect. I had an aunt that really connected with a couple of them. And that was just nice, mm -hmm. you know, to have that continuity. And it meant a lot to her to be on that floor and have the same people. So um, it's not like they're faceless. I mean, they're in their they're, they meet the patients and they get to know the patients and uh, that's, that's, they bring a smile to their faces and that that's important. They're part of the department yeah, on the floor absolutely. they're not, I mean, they kind of, our house, our housekeepers have two departments. They have the housekeeping department. Um, and then they have the, the unit they're working on. Um, we're very, um, we have great teamwork. We are, I don't know um, how to explain it. Like for center, you know, or the ortho department, they take in our housekeeper. They yeah, involve absolutely. them in their holiday events and stuff. Absolutely. Um, so it's I a mean, it's a good ownership. It's, uh, it's Nora, right? From Germany, Nora. Yes. Nora. Yeah. Yeah. She, I think, had 10 guardian angels oh, from patients. Oh, easily. Easily. Yeah. So, so she was awesome. Mm -hmm. Now she's retired, correct? She's yeah, retired. yeah. 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 Uh, good for her. Yeah, she was a great face. Patients loved her. Yeah. She loved what she did. She, she was a fixture on Three West in the back in the day. Yeah, great ownership. Yes, totally. <laughs>
Guten Tag, Herr Fräulein. I would talk to her all the time. <laughs> she was awesome. Um, now there is there there's once once they get here, what what is there opportunities to enhance their skills or professional development? I mean, um, there are uh, programs um, out there that we can further. Um, it's something I would like to look more into. Um, but as for the hospital, a lot of people um, like to get in, work environmental services, move on to um, CNA positions and um, just kind of move up throughout healthcare. Yeah. Um, we have a great team um, right now that if they're um, that they bounce around a little bit between departments. Um, so I have great cross training between my teams. Um, I have laundry um, techs that help in housekeeping or environmental services when needed. I have courier um, folks that help in laundry or environmental service, you know, um, a lot of good cross training going on and we'll work with anybody who wants now, to move up. Courier services and mail, the room, is that your, under your yeah. umbrella too? Yep. Oh, cool. I got a lot. <laughs> yeah, you, that, that's a good crew there too. Yes. Let's not forget about them. Yeah, I have a great team. Yeah, and, you and do. And they help each other out. I have housekeepers yeah. that will stay and make sure our laundry team is set to go in the morning, you know. Um I, my courier team, you know, you talked about the pandemic. They were part of, they were a reason why we had ISO gowns because they were going through them. Um, just the great training or, you know, great cross training we have going on. So. I, I at least, I know down on the, you know, the administrative side of things, the courier and the mm -hmm. healthcare, they're part of our team. Mm -hmm. EBS, I mean, that's just part of our team. We talk to them every day, just yeah. multiple times every day. So, um, well, technology has touched every uh, profession, mm -hmm. not just medical. I mean, technology is everywhere. Uh, so tell us how technology has helped your team be more efficient and how it's integrated in with maybe – so you know about things ahead of time. Tell us about that with the medical record. You know, so how does that work? We use a um, program that is census-based. And it um, links up with our EPIC system. So um, we know if patients come into the room after midnight, if they come into the room after midnight, um, it'll show up that the room's vacant and we won't necessarily go in and clean that room. We'll go touch bases with the patient, say, hey, do you need anything? But we won't go in and like mop the floors and do the daily cleaning. Um, so that allows flexibility with some of the schedules. So we're able to combine some schedules. You know, if it's low census, we're able to put like the housekeeper on three center and three west. So, so you actually use the, our Epic, our computer system to get your job done efficiently yep. and know about things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. That's, that's it. I know sometimes, how long does it take to clean a room? Um, it takes an average about, um, 40, 45 minutes to clean a normal um, discharge room. Um, it could be longer. Um, if it's an isolation, it takes a little over an hour. Um, and every room's different. You right, know, right. if you have a patient that was here one day, it's probably not going to take that long. If you, um, we've had some patients that are here for, you know, 60 days. Those take a little bit longer because... They've, they've lived in that yeah, room. Yeah, they've for, lived and they've moved in. Yeah. So um, those take a little bit longer to clean. And then that's when we usually, like those rooms, we would um, involve our equipment operators and they'd go in and do a, like a top to bottom, like deep clean. So it's so about 45 minutes. Well, that's so, the housekeeper. And then we would probably spend about five, six hours with our, if we're able to, um, with our equipment operator to do a like full. But, but even in a best case scenario, you're in the ER, you're waiting for a bed. It's going to take 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And so. And that's if we don't have any others that we're cleaning exactly. at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there's sometimes the bed board has 15 beds that need to be cleaned and you just got to kind of our supervisors and leads do a really good job at looking at the bed board, seeing what areas have open beds and what areas don't. So they try to focus that attention and get the rooms that don't have open beds um, before the ones that already do. But, it, but it's, I guess, I guess I, I kind of, I mean, I understand you want to do things fast, 
uh, just from a standpoint of efficiency. But I, I guess I also raise this with mentality. If you don't have time to do it right the first time, you're going to have time to do it right the second time. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And so, 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 you know, take your time, get it done correctly and clean. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, that's just kind of me. I know, you know, my surgical friends are always trying to get, because they don't want their patient under anesthesia and, you know, hurry, hurry, hurry. And, uh, and that, I'm more of a, that's probably why I'm not a surgeon. Our team takes great ownership. You know, their yes, names, their names are on the board. Um, the patient Absolutely. knows, you know, they know who cleaned it. We write our name on the whiteboard, have a nice table tent that says yeah. who cleans the room. So it's, it's, and you just, you just can't teach that. That is just mm-hmm. something people have and your team has that. Mm-hmm. You're, you're lucky. Great ownership. Yeah. I know your story. But why don't you tell us, how did you get started in EVS and ended up where, where you're oh, at? Oh, man. Um, so I've been here about 20 years in August. Um, I started and I, I guess grew up within uh, support services. Um, I don't know where I wanted to be, but um, environmental services is kind of where I landed. Um, I had some great, uh, great managers um, over the course of the years and um I looked up to them. So this is kind of where I'm at. Um, some of them pointed me in the direction on where to be and how to get there. And so I'm part of the uh, America Healthcare uh, Association and, um, and I've gotten some training through there. And Well, you're very, very well respected amongst the hospital leadership. I know Casey Green has nothing but praise to say for you and your team. Yeah, I I love it here. I mean, this is my family. I've been here since I've been eight, well, 17 years old. But um, so. Well, I, I tell people, this is my forever home. Mm-hmm. This is where I'll, I'm born here. I'm going to finish here. Um, I think that's going to be my case, too. Yeah. <laughs> so we maybe we'll retire together. Right. Um, now, I, I, hopefully some listeners are maybe interested in environmental services. And what, how, so how would they get a, a career in that? How would they get started? Um, they, uh, you go uh, out to um, our website and um, there's usually openings um, in everywhere within Unity Point, no matter uh, where you live. Um, we do a, we have a great um, transfer program too. Like if you end up, we have some housekeepers that'll move up to like Waterloo and they'll transfer up there. Um, but you just apply and, uh, we'll give you a call. Brandy, thanks for joining me. This is, uh, this has been very interesting sharing a day in the life of environmental services and, and the critical role that they play in the hospital. Cause that's people's first impression. Mm-hmm. You know, that is the first impression, you know, Once again, this is Brandy Dolter, Manager of Environmental Services for St. Luke's Hospital. If you're interested in a career in environmental services at St. Luke's, visit unitypoint.org backslash careers. Thank you for listening to Live Well Talk On. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your family, friends, neighbors, strangers about our podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, be well.